Welcome to Unit 2, Introducing AngularJS. The last unit was an introduction to client-side web applications and why we need a client-side MVC framework. Uh, we saw how we could address the uh, client-side development and the complexities on the client-side by having some kind of a framework which helps us write code using for, you know, standard patterns like the MVC pattern. In this unit, we're going to start looking at Angular JS. So here's where we're going to actually kick things off with Angular. We can look at how Angular solves the problem of client-side MVC. It turns out Angular is really good for doing client-side MVC. It provides you the pattern in which you can write the model view and the controller separately so that you can manage your code better and write more complex applications on the client-side. But if you were to look at the AngularJS website, the official website for AngularJS is uh, angularjs.org. So this is the official website for the 1.x version. If you look at the landing page, you're not going to see uh, the occurrence of the term MVC, which is actually interesting because AngularJS does MVC so well. Uh, what you're actually going to see is something like this. It's probably going to read HTML enhanced for web apps. That's what it reads today as I'm recording this video. It might be different, but it's very likely going to be the same because this is kind of like the fundamental uh, core philosophy of Angular. Uh, now, why is this? Why does Angular not call itself an MVC framework? Why does it call itself HTML enhanced? Now, if you read some of the description on the website, I've actually taken a small snippet of this description and I've put it over here. So this is what it says. It says HTML is great for declaring static documents, but it falters when we try to use it for declaring dynamic views in web applications. You remember we talked about how HTML was static, and uh, that's what they mentioned over here. AngularJS lets you extend HTML vocabulary for your application. The resulting environment is extraordinarily expressive, readable, and quick to develop. Let's ignore the last statement, which is kind of marketing speak, but let's look at the first sentence in the, in the second paragraph. AngularJS lets you extend HTML vocabulary. Do you see it? It's almost as if the creators of Angular seems to hate HTML and they're trying to fix it. They're saying HTML is great for static documents, but it's not great for dynamic documents. So AngularJS lets you extend HTML so you can actually build dynamic documents and applications with it. Right? So it's almost as if they hate HTML and they're trying to fix it. Well, maybe not hate, but they certainly seem to think that it's not good enough for dynamic applications. And they want you to use Angular to extend it. All right? So this is the key philosophy for extending HTML. This is the key philosophy of Angular. Uh, and this is the reason why Angular does not call itself a client-side MVC framework. This is actually, uh, it turns out to be a key distinction to make as an AngularJS developer. AngularJS is not a different way or a better way to write your standard JavaScript or jQuery code. It's a whole new way to think about writing client-side apps. So let me demonstrate what this different way of thinking is. Let's take a contrived example. Let's say you want to show uh, a date, right? The current date in an HTML document. So you're building HTML, you want to show what the current date is, so that when somebody loads the HTML page, they see the date at which they loaded the page, right? It's a simple, a simple requirement. So let's take something like this. You create a div with an ID called date, all right? And uh, you want to show the current date there, so that when the page loads, the date gets displayed. This is clearly JavaScript, because HTML, like I said, is static. It cannot change what the content is based on when you load the page. So this is you know, a classic example of the content changing depending on the time at which you load the page. So this clearly has to be JavaScript, which executes on the client-side browser, gets the current date, and adds it to the HTML so that you see it, right? So here is the standard JavaScript or the jQuery way. This is how you would write JavaScript code if you were to show the date in the HTML. The first thing you do is, you find the element where you need to show the date, right? If you need to get that element in the DOM, here it's a div with an ID date. So you need to say, okay, hey DOM or hey browser, give me the div which has an ID called date. And you're gonna get that div object, right? That's the object in the document object model tree. You're gonna get that object. Then what you do, you write code to get the current date. 
right? JavaScript has a way to get the date. There's a date, uh, there's a date object. So you can get the date object, get that date, convert it to some kind of a string. And then now that you have the div with the ID date, you're gonna append that string to that div, right? You're gonna insert that string into the div. Now, once you insert the string, the browser is gonna show the date, right? So these are the three standard steps that you would need to do in order to show the date. Every time you need to show the date, these are the three steps. First, get the element, get the date, put the date into the element, right? Does that make, does that make sense? So these are the three steps. And this is the standard JavaScript or the jQuery way of doing things. But think about this, wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have to do this? This is a, a contrived example, of course, but there are a lot of use cases where you have to sprinkle some JavaScript to get what we want out of HTML. Most of the times you need this for something that's dynamic, right? Because again, static is uh, all that HTML can do. If you need dynamic, you need JavaScript and you have to do something like this. But what if we had something like this? a current date element. I know that HTML doesn't have it, but imagine if HTML did have it, or maybe something like this. There's a div and a current date attribute. Now, all you need to do when you have to show the date is just add that element or add that attribute, and HTML would insert the date automatically. Wouldn't it be cool if you did that? Wouldn't it be cool if there was a feature in HTML which did exactly that? Well, turns out there isn't a feature. But wouldn't it be cool if you could extend HTML and create this element? This is what extending HTML means, and this is what Angular lets you do. Angular lets you create these custom elements in the HTML, and you can use functionality, you can write code to bind to those custom elements so that every time you use that custom element, you're gonna get that functionality that code that you write bound to the element is gonna get executed and you have JavaScript running on the client side, right? This is a very important distinction to make. This is different from the JavaScript or the jQuery way of doing things that I showed you before. Here's the JavaScript or the jQuery way of doing things. First thing you do is find an element, right? Find the element that you need to modify, get it from the DOM. Second, you run some custom logic, which you need for the data. Then third, you update the element, right? You take that custom logic, whatever is the output that it generated, and then you add that to the element that you found in step one. This is the standard classic JavaScript or the jQuery way. And this is where it's different with Angular. With Angular, you need to do three steps, but it's a little bit different. So here's what you need to do. First, you need to create a custom element type, right? You're not finding the element, you're creating or you're declaring a custom element you create your own type. You extend HTML by having your own custom type. And then you define a logic that goes with that element, right? You declare it and you define it. In the case of a date, you declare an element called date and you define the logic that is coupled with that element. And now that you have this custom element, you use the element wherever you want, right? So that's the third step. The good thing about this approach is now that you've defined an element type, you can use it in multiple places easily. The logic and the element are kind of bound together. If you have a new element that you've created and defined called current date, you have to do that just once. And then you can use that in as many places in your HTML as you want. And every time you use that element, it's the exact same logic that executes and it's the exact same behavior that you're gonna get. In a way, you're kind of like creating UI components that you can use in multiple different places. Hopefully that makes sense.